All right, this is how I solder an SSOP uh, size chip. This is the FT232RL, the USB to serial chip that goes on the logic board. And uh, I'm going to show you how I solder one. And usually it doesn't take more than oh, a minute or two. So here's some of these things that I use. Uh, of course, tweezers. And uh, you can use hemostats, not necessary. Uh, a uh, little artist brush to apply the flux. Of course, here's the flux. I use paste flux and or liquid flux. Either one will work. Uh, probably using the paste flux. It tends to be a little stickier. Holds the chip in place a little better. And then uh, some solder wick or braid. And then, of course, solder. And here is my soldering iron. It is a cheap little $35 Elenco soldering iron with a rheostat here to adjust the temperature. I tend to have it about three quarters of the way up, but I'm doing a chip like this. And make sure you have your sponge wet, keeping a clean tip, keep the tip nice and clean and silver, and it lasts a lot longer. I've had this tip for at least two or three months now, and it's still in good shape. So I'm going to see if I can set up the camera here so you can see the detail. And uh, we'll go from there. Make sure you line it up on both sides. You'll have a tendency to want to fall off the pads. The pads at the high spot. So it may require a little bit of finesse. Once you have it, your soldering iron. And usually there's a little bit of solder on the pads. The actual coating. Typically that's enough. Get these three pads here that I'm kind of working on to stick. Now once it's stuck on that corner, what you want to do is spin it around. Add a little bit more flux across the pins. And again, try to repeat the same procedure here. So a little bit of solder that's on your tip and on the pads will actually hold it in place. Now it's held on both corners, you can see. Take your soldering iron, make sure your tip is clean. And just take a little tiny dab of solder. And let the flux do its job. And slowly work your way down the pins. And you'll see the solder will just automatically flow onto each pin and pad. And solder that entire side. Now the only way this works is with the flux. The flux is what's actually keeping the solder from flowing in between the pins, jumping the pins, and you still may get a little jump. But that can easily be fixed too. Again, a little more flux on this side. Don't be afraid of the flux. Most of the time it's your friend. Again, a little bit of solder. You can get quite enough there. You can see I kind of balled the solder up on the end of my solder here. So, cut that off. Clean my tip again. And again, slowly work my way 
down the pins. Make sure I'm on the pins and also the pads. And that should be complete. I like to always do a little double check. On both sides. And then do a visual inspection with a loop. Maybe you can see I have a small bridge in the last two pins on this side here. Now, you could use a wick and try to absorb some of the solder. What I'm going to do is just heat it and pull it down this way. And pulling it down away from the pins tends to separate small bridges like that. You can see it worked here just fine. Now I'll double check. All the pins look good. See if I can get kind of a close up here. Alright, I actually have the camera on top of the loop. Let's see if I can get this to work here. You can see all the solder joints. Everything looks like it's soldered fine to the pads. There's no bridges. And that should be one soldered SSOP chip. This happens to be a FT232RL, which is the USB to serial chip, uh, to adapt uh, the computer input to the serial input of the A2 Mega chip to run the logic board. And that's it.